Okay, let's continue tackling solving our test problem. So where we last left off, we were having trouble because we didn't have a create action in our controller. So let's go ahead and add that and see what happens next. So we're going to create the create action. We're going to run our tests again. And now we should be able to find the create action and see what the, the next problem is. And we can see here that now we're missing the view part of our create. And you may be tempted to do what we did with the, the new action and, and the index action and create a, a new view. But I want you to think about what we just looked at in the last video with the post redirect get pattern. We are always going to be posting when we do this create action. So we don't ever want to respond with HTML in our create. In fact, what we want to do is we want to redirect from that create. So let's do that. Let's redirect to, that's a, a Rails method that will tell the web server to res respond back with one of these 300 level requests and we need to tell it what URL that 300 level request has. So let's um, point back to our, our user's path. In other words, the path for our index. We, we need to point somewhere. So after we've created a user, we're going to say, ah, oh, let's show all the users. That, that seems good. And so now uh, we can run our tests again. And now we have our create action. And while the create doesn't have a view, it's going to respond back with the, the view from our index. And we can see we are now down to three errors. One that says when we have valid information it should add that user to the database which we haven't done anywhere so it's not a surprise that that fails. And then our two error uh, and success messages. So let's go ahead and try to deal with this by adding the user to the system. And the, the way that we're going to do that is pretty simple. We're going to call user.create, not user.new like we did here, because in this case down here, we want to actually save that user to the database. And then we need to give it some data. And we haven't talked about this yet, but the, the data that we get from a form being posted to this is given to us in a special object called params. So we'll do param. And params acts like a hash for most purposes. And so we don't want to create it any old user. We want to create the params with the user part of that hash. Uh, because the, the rest of that hash is, is used by other Rails things. So let's save this and go ahead and I'm going to start up the server because I, I want to show what happens when we do this. Uh, so let's go here. Let's show when we fill in our data and submit it, we get an error. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is one for the error, but I also wanted to show you this is that params hash that we just looked at right here. And so you can see that includes some data of whether or not we understand UTF-8, um, some security stuff that we can get into later. And this is the user part of that hash. And notice that user part of that hash, here's the begin squiggle, here's the end squiggle. So that user includes the user's name, their email, password, and the fact, uh, actually the squiggle ends here, sorry. 
and the fact uh, the password is filtered out so someone can't uh, snoop while, while they're watching us. If uh, I were to turn on Firebug in <clears throat> the web browser, we could see how this is sent to the user by looking at the, the post we can see that it's actually sent as parameters that look like these strings and what the let's scroll this up a little bit what the rails does is it sees this user sub email and says oh user must be a hash with email as a key in that hash as with name as a key in the hash with password as key in the hash so the there's those hashes and then we see those values john doe john dot doe at example dot com and our filtered password right here so we can see that what we submit with the browser is converted by the rails framework into this nicer data structure this params data structure which basically asks as a hash so that's what we get so you might be asking yourselves if, if that's the case then why didn't picking the user part of that params work uh, it, it should work and it, it didn't because <clears throat> we get this forbidden attributes error right here and the answer to that question is Rails wants to be very careful that someone doesn't send additional information in this hash that you might not want them to send. If they're using your web interface, they're going to send data that you want. But if they try to go around your web interface just using straight HTML, HTTP communication, they, they can look at what your web app does. They can look at the information that you're sending and they might try to add additional information in here like maybe your user has a value that says that they're an administrator or maybe it has account balance in there which would be kind of weird but whatever the case is they might try to uh, inject additional information into that and if we just did a user.create and accepted whatever they gave us then we would create a user with all of the data that they gave us regardless of whether we wanted to accept that data or not and so rails requires us to explicitly list what attributes we're going to accept when we do something like this so instead of doing this params sub user directly what we have to do is uh, two steps here the first step is that we're going to say we require the user hash to be in the params and if it's not there then we'll throw an error and inside of that user hash so we're going to do a dot from that user we're going to allow or permit certain attributes they may or may not be there we don't care uh, but we're not going to allow anything else and those are going to be our name, our email, and our password. And by doing that, we now tell Rails specifically, hey, we're going to look in the user hash part, and inside that user hash, we're going to accept name, email, and password. But if they try to send us any additional information, we're going to ignore it. We're going to reject it because that is not good and so now that we've got that saved we still got our server running I'm gonna refresh this page because it broke on the post we didn't um, do it and so Firefox is asking us do you really want to resend that information yes and now we've been redirected to our list of users and so you may ask why we still only have two users well that's because we tried to add John Doe a second time and our validations reject that. So it looks like from our web browser point of view everything's working. Let's go ahead and 
run our tests and see what the, the tests say about our situation here. So churn, 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 and now we're down to two errors, those being the errors. So now we successfully add people that we should be able to add. We successfully don't add people that break validations. And so we're left with these, these nice notices uh, to show our users.